What is up you guys, Anton with you today and we're back at Iron Man update videos, finally. Um, if you don't know, I haven't been following along, I had to move, kind of sort of moved in, half the boxes are unpacked, most importantly, Iron Man is unpacked. So this video is going to be an update of progress of where I'm at because I honestly don't remember what all I've told you guys about. I've done some work on it, not too much since then, and the plans of what we need to address, fix, and what I'm going to do next and you guys will see some close-up updates on that. So we're going to head in full force, Iron Man suits, and without further ado, let's get it. So as you guys saw me putting it together, here he is. So what are the issues when he addresses? Let's get onto that first because um, during the move, we had these this crease on the abs form. Uh, it's really, really bad. So definitely need to fix and re-weld that. And uh, I have a heat gun now, so I'm gonna work on that uh, with a heat gun and warp it around me. Other part, this is collar piece right here. Yeah, uh, so initially, uh, I didn't know how to print that collar file. I have the version two, I believe, of Iron Man um, from DO3D. If you want, by the way, these file suits, they're always in the link in the description. Just search MK85 on the DO3D website. And if you buy something, that or any other file, uh, I get a slight commission helps me out. So, um, and you get 20% off. So why not? Win-win. Anyways, that part right there, I sliced it in half right here because I didn't know how to print it. Figured out on the second orientation, I could print it in one piece. So mistakes were made. And during the move, that cracked right there. Good thing it happened now and not at some sort of uh con that i'm going to so um and by the way yeah dragon con, dragon con got canceled the one that i was going to because it's COVID. so we have a little bit more time to get this guy all situated and working so i'm not 100 percent sure if i'm just gonna reprint it completely try to reweld it we'll see the other thing is the shoulder right here you see those uh lines that they're they're awful i i was learning how to 3d print the right shoulder is one of the first things i did for iron man back way back uh, it seems like forever ago, but it's only like three months maybe. So we're going to reprint that. Um, the other issues that we have are not very serious. Uh, probably same thing with this guy. This was just like the shoulder. I printed it flat, not upright. Not an issue. Uh, left hand I'm going to print next. And then the legs you guys see are fully done, actually. These legs are done. I learned that I could uh, split this file right here for the legs, and it'll be a little bit better. Uh, but this was done all in one print right here. It didn't turn out bad too. So we'll see. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that, how I'm going to connect it all. But what I'm probably going to work on next with Iron Man is actually not addressing those issues. I want to finish completely uh, the prints. So the left hand shoulder prints are going to be next. I'm going to be working on gluing these guys together to the shoes. And then I have, and you guys will see in this whole mess, I have the cod piece. I actually started working on that. I have all the parts printed. So that's the back plates right there. And these are the front plates. Uh, those parts right there are just parts of the shoe and the ankle. So uh, they're sanded. They're printed. They came out decent. They're a little bit difficult to orient. Um, you can see on this one I had, you know, not the prettiest prints, but it's inside. So it's it's not a, a serious issue. In fact, it's kind of on the inside bottom. So if someone's looking there, we've got other issues. But <laughs> I just got to weld that together. Prime it, sand it some more. So cod piece is gonna be next, and I'm gonna be trying to harness up the legs together. Cause as they are right now, it's a little goofy looking. Yeah, so I promised goofy looking a little bit. These feet, they go up, but remember this is a model for a six foot person. I'm five eight for reference, if you can tell. It's not terrible, and actually, I'm really surprised how much mobility I have right now. Still needs to be trimmed on the insides a little bit. And then when I put on the thigh pieces. Okay, so yeah, I'm standing on my tiptoes. I'm definitely going to need to trim some more of this to make it fit me. But I want it to look like a tall Iron Man, not one that's miniaturized to 5'8". Uh, Iron Man, uh, the guy who plays him, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, he's my height. So... He wore heels in the movies, if you don't know it or not. And the reason being is you don't see superheroes that are super short. So these proportions aren't normal. So I didn't scale it. I want it six foot tall and I'm going to make it work under me. It's going to just take a lot of work. It hurts. I'm like about to fall over. I feel like a statue. I can barely walk in it. 
Um, but it looks all right. Uh, plastic man, right? Uh, so that's what we're going to be working on next. I'm going to trim around so I can move my feet a little better and not feel like I'm just dying in pain because it's pinching. My knee is really bad right now. If you're wondering, you know, if you need to make this smaller for you, you need to make it taller. Well, you got other issues and you probably do want to scale this. Right here, these guys, you can definitely trim because you can see just, you know, the cuts it made on my legs right here trying to wear it like that. Here's the Ironman update. So we have a lot of work to do, but it's almost all printed. Technically, in theory, he is all printed, but I got to reprint some parts as you guys saw. We're going to work on that next. I'll show you guys an up close look video uh, vlog style of me working on that next. And then hopefully we will have this guy and at least the legs wearable part and most of the torso in the next couple of weeks. So here you go. That's an update video. So I'm about to start working on these cod pieces and I'll get them all together. And this is an issue that, you know, you don't think about you might have until you have it. Now for resin printers, you have it all the time. You got all your tools. You want to do some post work. You got super glue, sanding, you got soldering iron, whatever it is, resin especially. You don't want a nasty work surface every single time. You don't want to ruin it. So normally I would throw down some cardboard, but I got a better solution. My friends over at Wham Bam sent this over, slap mat. Actually, let's try that again. Slap mat. Eh. So what you do with this is you slap people. No, I'm just kidding. What's awesome about this mat, first of all, is it's 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 a pretty good size area. I mean, this is more than enough for me to be working on a cod piece, 100% on it, totally free. But wh wh why is this awesome? I mean, some people don't care about their table getting ruined. Okay, what about super glue? What about resin? What if you get it onto your work table? Cardboard piece, you just throw it away. What about this one? It doesn't stick to it. Let me show you guys. So here we go. I got freaking Gorilla Glue. Serious, strong stuff. And I'm just gonna purposefully put it on top of this slap mat. Right there. And we're gonna let it dry. Let's see what happens. So, you can barely tell there's some super glue that I have all flat here. Boom. I just flex this thing, and it pops right off. Just like that. The easiest way to clean Gorilla Glue ever. It's incredible. What's even better, this is very much gonna come into play later as I work on this. With electronics and you have a soldering iron, first of all, this is hot. If you drop it on something like, you know, this table over here, you're gonna leave some marks. This guy, he's resistant to it for a couple of seconds. It's pretty awesome. Boom, just like that, you can see it disappearing and it's gonna be gone in a couple of seconds. Check this out. This is where I had the soldering iron. I literally rub it off, it's gone. You don't even know it was there. It's resistant to freaking soldering irons, hot tips. So, super inexpensive, this awesome thing. 19 bucks as of uh, the time that I'm making this video. It's about $20 for a thing. Uh, link is down in the description. Got you guys code over there. And I highly recommend this, especially if you're a resi printer. You wanna have a clear work area. You don't wanna mess things up. You wanna improve your workflow and efficiency. Super cheap, super awesome thing. Thank you guys over at Wham Bam for uh, sending me one of these over. Definitely will be using this and I strongly recommend it. So there you go, guys. That's an update video. Lots of fun, exciting stuff coming up. And I'll see you guys in the next one.